Yo, what's going on guys? So today I'm going to talk about fiber and when it's beneficial, when it's not beneficial and my experience with fiber. There's a lot to talk about uh, so I'm going to be as short and concise as possible. I'll put some links down below that you guys can check out and let's jump right into it. What is fiber? Um, fiber is found in plant foods. There's both soluble and insoluble fiber. Soluble fiber is generally the fiber known to feed bacteria in our colon to produce fatty acid that accounts for roughly 5% of our energy production in our body. Uh, this uh, bacteria produces those the fatty acids which are then converted into ketones and then our body uses for energy. Uh, and then there's insoluble fiber which like it sounds it's insoluble. Uh, it's just bulk waste that gets pushed through our digestive tract. And how is uh, fiber beneficial? Well, when we're eating carbohydrates, uh, so as you know, carbohydrates, they get broken down into simple sugars and that the body utilizes for energy. And the benefit of fiber is that it regulates the, uh, the blood sugar and it regulates the insulin. And by not spiking the blood sugar insulin, we're able to live longer, healthier lives. Um, keeping the blood sugar from spiking and the insulin low has shown to be an extremely important factor in longevity. So naturally, anybody eating a plant-based diet is gonna be consuming higher amounts of fiber. And this is a good thing. Fiber is necessary when eating plant foods uh, because it regulates the absorption. And so if somebody has a healthy digestive tract, they're not experiencing gas bloating indigestion, you know, they don't have bacterial or fungal growth issues uh, and just, you know, like inflammatory issues, then fiber, at least in moderation, should not be an issue. So throughout history, we have shown to, been eaten, to have eaten uh, roughly one third plant foods and then two thirds animal foods. So a high fiber diet, like large amounts of fiber, haven't really... Um, been part of our you know dietary evolution you could say so this is why a lot of people experience issues when they like really ramp up the amount of fiber i think there's there's like a zone so if someone's consuming small amounts to moderate amounts of fiber they generally don't have any issues although maybe when they go like fully plant-based they start experiencing a lot of gas and indigestion and bloating and this is probably because they're consuming more fiber than their body can handle. Not only fiber, but types of sugars such as polysaccharides, um, sugar alcohols, disaccharides that commonly create fermentation. Um, these are called FODMAPs. You can check that out as well. I'll put a, a link below, I guess, for that as well. Um, and so there's definitely some precautions to take. Um, but you know, if you don't have any gas, any bloating, any digestion, you've got a healthy digestive tract with no inflammatory issues, then fiber should not be an issue. And just a little history behind fiber. Uh, if you were around before the 1980s, you probably remember, remember a time when fiber wasn't really talked about as much. And this is because there weren't as many uh, marketing campaigns created to push products high in fiber. These brand companies, cereal companies, companies pushing foods high in fiber, created a, um, a mar marketing campaigns that you know basically told us that fiber was beneficial, fiber was a necessity, especially for bowel health. Um, the biggest one is eat fiber so you don't get constipated. This is just like utter nonsense. I I recently made a video with a chart showing the carnivore, the omnivore, the herbivore, the frugivore, and the human. And if you look at the human, it shows that, uh, you know, we can't have bowel movements without fiber, like fiber is required for peristalsis. And that is just complete and utter nonsense. Many people who are consuming fiber eliminate it and then their bowel, their bowel health and their bowel function improves dramatically. Um, so there's a lot of marketing behind fiber. Not as many studies showing that there are clear benefits such as alleviating constipation. There have been studies shown that people increase fiber and have more bowel movements, but that's not, generally, that's not necessarily associated with alleviating constipation. The definition of constipation is when we're 
unable to eliminate waste from our digestive tract and that it's associated with pain and discomfort and there's other um, symptoms as well but the main one is like pain discomfort you know difficulty to eliminate um, and so you I mean you can think about it like this so like insoluble fiber it's just a, a bulk of waste and if we're constipated and have a lot of bulk waste in our digestive tract and then we add more it's like adding cars to a traffic jam it really doesn't make a lot of sense and it also shows in uh, in these studies that um, just drinking more water isn't necessarily beneficial either to people that were adequately adequately hydrated although I'm sure a lot of people that consume a lot of fiber aren't adequately adequately hydrated because fiber is dehydrating in the sense that it wants to absorb moisture, especially like soluble fiber. Soluble fiber will, will absorb moisture, so it's important to drink enough uh, water to be able to moisten it to move it through the, the bowel. Okay, so when is fiber not beneficial and when would we not need fiber? Well, we wouldn't need fiber on our carnivorous diet because A, we're not consuming carbohydrates, so we don't have as much of a need to blunt the insulin and blood sugar spikes. Yes. Protein, I'm aware, does spike your insulin, but if we're consuming a higher ratio of fat to protein, uh, then we're going to have even less of a need. It's shown that carbohydrates spike insulin the most, then protein, and then fat the least. Um, another reason why somebody might not want fiber is when they have inflammatory bowel issues. Uh, you know, if your bowels are inflamed, I'm just going to use the example there's like an open wound and fiber is just roughage so it's like grabbing a handful of plant matter and just rubbing it you know it's like sandpaper on an open wound it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense a lot of people who start practicing uh, high fiber diets or like plant-based diets that have inflammatory bowel issues they tend to only get worse or maybe their bacterial or fungal overgrowth, overgrowth just gets worse um, and so by removing fiber, um, they're able to eliminate the food source for that fungal or bacterial overgrowth, therefore starving it and eliminating it, and removing the roughage that inflames the already compromised GI tract, um, giving it time to heal. So the energy source that we get from <clears throat> soluble fiber is in the form of fatty acids and ketones which we would be receiving in a carnivorous diet uh, and so there's no real like energetic benefit per se so just to recap carbohydrates and fiber go hand in hand carnivorous diet no fiber goes hand in hand um, people seem to do okay on high fiber plant-based diets people seem to do on or do okay on zero fiber, zero carbohydrate diets. Not everyone is going to have the same response to every diet. Uh, you know, we're, this, we're pretty similar in our, or identical in our physiology, almost, well, almost identical. But we're, we are unique in our biochemistry. And so the diets are going to definitely uh, have different effects on us, guys. It's like we see this time and time again. Everybody believes that like there's like this one ideal way of eating when even if we take a look at indigenous peoples or hunter-gatherer tribes, they all ate differently. They ate according to what they had in their local area and not everyone ate the same foods, but there was a, <laughs> the commonality was, I mean, they're pretty much, you know, most of them were thriving and there was very little disease and very little illness. Uh, so it's not always gonna be the same for everyone. Um, although, you know, like if somebody is having a lot of issues with high fiber, you know, I would recommend reducing the amount of fiber. And just my own experience with eliminating fiber on this diet is that I've had uh, much more uh, regular bowel movements, um, easier bowel movements. I have completely eliminated any pain or discomfort that I had from uh, eating plant-based meals that were high in fiber. I noticed that, you know, the high fiber caused a lot of anxiety, a lot of like panic. Um, I would be really uncomfortable after I ate meals. Sometimes I'd have to lay down. <clears throat> and so 
Oh man, I even remember going like days and days and days without having a bowel movement. Um, I just really had issues time and time and time again with, um, you know, like a high fiber diet. And once I eliminated all the fiber, the issues went away. I no longer had like the distended stomach, the gas, the bloating, the, the brain fog, just like the mental and emotional instability. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I can just feel that my gut is in much better shape, able to process these foods without issue. And so it just works a lot better for me. And I've, I've included, you know, I've put some starches back in my diet. I've put some fruit back in my diet and I just don't, I don't seem to feel as good. I don't seem to function as well. I get joint pain. I get more back pain. Uh, my energy levels tend to go down. And I know this isn't the same, the, the case for everybody, but like I'm saying, p different people have different experiences. And so, um, you know, where I'm at now is I do eat, you know, like a couple pieces of fruit a day. It's really nice. It's enjoyable. It's hydrating. Uh, it's a tasty treat, but it's not like the staple of my diet. And with that being said, I mean, if we just look at our physiology, we're just not set up to digest large amounts of fiber. Uh, physiologically speaking, if we look at an herbivore, they're obviously set up to digest large amounts, large amounts of plant matter. If we look at primates, they are, uh, they're capable of digesting um, more amounts of plant matter, less than an herbivore, but more than a human. You know, they tend to have a larger colon, a larger cecum, which gives them more capability to ferment and extract energy from fiber. And so, I mean, if we just look at our basic phys physiology, I would say that humans can generally tolerate small amounts of fiber and the less like rough and the less irritating the, you know, the better off we're generally going to be. Uh, I don't, I've, this is kind of a long talk on fiber, but there's a lot to it. A lot of people have issues with fiber guys. Um, and this is like usually not thought about so much. This is usually not talked about as much, but this can be a major issue uh, in people's diets. And so I thank you guys for tuning in. It was kind of a long video just for fiber. Uh, you know, if you guys have more questions or comments, put them down below. I'll put some links down below that you guys can check out. Uh, thank you guys so much. Give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe for more content. Stay tuned for more. Peace, guys.